it's all those open-minded white men and women who are marrying black, Hispanic, Asian people. I'm like, guys, don't blame it on the Asian guys. We're not taking all the white women out here. We all know this. <laughs> Are white people vanishing in America? A new study has came out and the internet is going nuts. Oh man, we gotta talk about this. We're talking about a study that got posted on two different websites. One was a Latino American Instagram page. The other one is Daily Mail. Obviously that's based out of London. I would say primarily Caucasian user base. Mm -hmm. And they had very different reactions. Some shared sentiments though, but uh, from silly to serious, Andrew, is this silly or serious? I mean, I think this is silly, but I think that just the sound of it, when you hear white people are vanishing or this is the last of the white population, it can be very triggering to people. Obviously, some people are like cheering it on, and then some people are like, oh, it's not so good. It's not as good as you think it is. Anyways, we're gonna get into it, so please hit that like button right now, guys, because we are covering all different types of news stories out here and giving our commentary. Well, I'll tell you this. If you were part of a different population, then you might actually find it to be a little bit more serious than silly. But you, Mr. Fung, I would imagine you think it's silly. Well, I think it's silly just because... There's no way to stop it. But anyways, guys, uh, I'm going to read straight from the Daily Mail. Um, Gen Z Americans who were born between 1997 and 2012 will be the last generation with a white majority and will give way to a post-2012 majority minority generation. Uh, that change when non-Hispanic white people will fall below half as a share of the overall U.S. population should come around 2045, the study predicts. Uh, so pretty much 2045, that's the year. And I mean, people have thrown out this year before of like, oh, white people will become the minority. That doesn't mean that white people will be treated as minorities, but they population-wise compared to anyone non-white will become less than 50%. Right, so make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Andrew, there's also a Hari Kondabulu joke. Uh, he's a uh, Hindu-American comedian, and he was basically like saying, yeah, that's assuming that all the minorities think exactly the same and are on the same team against the whites. <laughs> right, like he was like saying that that's... Uh, the fear, like he was like saying, by far whites will still be the most powerful group, even if they're below 50%. Wait, so if it's not scary when white people are 51%, but right when it's 49.5%, then it's all of a all of a sudden like an emergency? I don't know, guys. This is kind of goofy because, I mean, I don't know. You let me know how you feel about it in the comments down below. But let me just read a little bit more. Uh, white Americans contribute substantially to the older population gains compared to younger and middle-aged populations, which registered whites declined. Um, that's people who registered as white, by the way. So maybe even identity is changing. Right, because right, what is white? Is it defined as an Anglo-Saxon or a Scandinavian right. person? What about white adjacent right. groups like a Sicilian? It's unclear, right? right. Uh, these patterns have led to a racial generation gap in which the younger population, more influenced by immigration in recent decades, is far more diverse than older age groups. You can tell probably by TikTok. Right. right. I mean, I think for me, as far as a quick thought goes, I think there's just pros and cons to everything. And a lot of people, sometimes when you're, you're, you're supporting something, you focus on the pros and you minimize the cons. When you're against something, you're going to trump up the cons and minimize the pros, mm. right? But there are realistically pros and cons to everything. Andrew, even something drinking diet soda, you avoid the calories and all the dangerous fructose, right? But guess what? Uh, was it aspartamine? or aspartame, there's some negative downside effects of that too. So I'm saying even things that are good, diversity, great, and we're part of the diversity of America. Yeah, we I are. I could see like things are good, are also more complicated too, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and I feel like this, and I don't know if there's any really angry racist white people watching this channel right now, but it's like, I think if this sounds really bad to you and you're very worried and you're like, oh my gosh, white people are vanishing. Ah, this is going to ruin America. I'm like, well, definitely don't blame the minorities and the immigrants because I think you don't only have to blame like other white people for it. Right, well, uh, I guess if they set the policies that way and you were right, like, if they what if they the go, well, but, but it was the other white people. No. It wasn't my type of white person. It was the other city liberals. They just had the open border policy. It's all those open-minded white men and women who are marrying black, Hispanic, Asian people. I'm like, guys, don't blame it on the Asian guys. We're not taking all the white women out here. We all know this. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Anyway, let's get into the comments section from You Ain't Hard News. Uh, this is a Latino-based page. I believe, I want to say it's more for Chicano Americans, primarily Mexican Americans. But, but, well, why are we reviewing these comments? Because this is from an Instagram page. These are, these are people, a lot of them are being funny. But it's interesting because I feel like a lot of Hispanic or the Latino population has an interesting perspective on this because a lot of them 
uh, are of white blood or look white visually, but don't necessarily count themselves as registered white. Right. I think the reason why the Latino page posting it is the most interesting, to your point, Andrew, is because they have people who look like Cameron Diaz and Christina Aguilera that count as Latino all the way to somebody who is like purely Oaxacan. Right, right. right. So that's just in Mexico alone. Of of course, maybe the bulk distribution is people who are a mix of the two. Mm. You know what I mean? Like Like a Chicano look, but like... You, you could be anywhere on the spectrum. Right. And they actually have a lot of political diversity within their uh, community as well. Ah. So uh, you're going to see it reflected in the comments section. Some people said, uh, oh, yeah, now it's time to call white people minorities now. And somebody was pointing out, yeah, wait, are, are Latinos even minorities? What about the white Latinos? What about uh, Marco Rubio? What about a Ted Cruz? What oh. about et cetera, et cetera? Are those, do those even count? Because their ancestors are from Spain. However, and Spain is considered Southern West. Western Europe versus British, which is uh, Northwestern Europe. Right, um, right, right. And some, this guy said, wait, so uh, we, are Watts, are we considered minorities now? Can we get that special status and all that affirmative action? <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny question, right, Andrew? If, if whites become the not the majority anymore, will affirmative action still make sense? I, I don't know if anything's going to kick into effect just because it dips below 50%. I don't think it's really going to matter. Right, because it'll still be the largest yeah. single group pie slice, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this guy said it never was a white country to begin with. Think about it. If they did not uh, systematically eliminate the Native Americans, then America would have just looked pretty much like Mexico by now where everybody's mestizo mixed between some sort of Western European blood and uh, Native American or Indiano. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, okay. I mean, that is an interesting concept. Um Uh, Louis C.K., I remember one time, Andrew, went on TV and basically was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, in Mexico, we just didn't, like, kill as many of the natives when... To, to mix with them versus you guys. Because <laughs> Louis yeah. C.K., Andrew, shockingly, to a lot of people, Andrew, he, I think he's mostly of Czech blood, is from Mexico. Right. Um, this guy said, why does it matter what the majority, what color is? It's just all about our behaviors and rebelling against the dominant class or the government controlling us organization by color of skin is a very limited way of thinking. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I I kind of agree. Obviously we understand race does end up having a lot to do with your class, your culture, uh, I guess. And that can lead to behaviors and stuff like that. So I think that's why a lot of people kind of like go down the line of like indirect, um, uh, effect, but yeah, I mean, I wish, I wish ideally most people I think would agree with this in an ideal world. Yeah, this uh, Mexican guy was saying, you know, it's tough because you fail to recognize the giant machine that we are all born into due to history. And if you don't acknowledge that, that's just being blissfully ignorant. Uh, To your point about saying like, you know, as much as race should not matter, I feel like it just statistically does though due to probable outcomes because of the lanes that we're all born into, right? But then again, the Hispanic population, there's always the non-white Hispanic population and the Hispanic population uh, that that's always counted. So, you know, that's always interesting. Um, This is really interesting because there are some conservative Latinos that said even, man, I don't want the U.S. to become like Latin America and then it's going to become a third world country. And then somebody said, what do you mean it's going to become a third world country? We are the new America. And somebody was like, what are you talking about? I don't want America to turn into Juarez. And these are mm. conservative Latinos saying that about Like, well, a lot of people are saying, hey, if I'm Mexican, I left Mexico. My parents left Mexico for a reason, not so that America would turn into some version or some parts of America would turn into some version of Mexico. I just want it to be different. Right. Uh, Right. These are other comments, not my comments, guys, from conservative Mexican Americans. This guy said, who cares? The Gen Z is made up of a bunch of whiny people. And unfortunately, I find that uh, a decent portion of the Hispanic population uh, is living, uh, I guess, with ghetto behaviors. This person said, no way. We need the proper whites around. We cannot all be reckless and violent. We have to live a boring lifestyle and there has to be boring people to balance out the society. Right. I think this is from you ain't hard food news, by the way, they, these are some interesting comments, man, because it's like uh, the like proper whites. Like what are proper whites? Because there's obviously a lot of improper whites, too. But there what, are what lo- you talking about me. No. You talking about me and Duck Dynasty. You think we're improper. No, no, no. You're saying you, we don't, yeah. you don't want more of us. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know about them, but I know that there are obviously like a lot of white people still in yeah. the infrastructure of America. I mean, right? let's be honest. I think that a lot of immigrants can look at like, and I'm not saying for sure, but like a Mitt Romney and be like, 
that like I'm not saying I agree. I'm not saying I agree with Mitt Romney's politics. But that is like a good man. Mm. I think a lot of people can see that. Let's be honest here. Um, this guy said, not on my watch. We need to save the whites. And somebody said, what do you mean by that? And he, this guy said, man, I'm not about to let these fine-ass white girls go extinct. <laughs> but then That's some funny. people were blaming this quote-unquote extinction of white people on white people themselves. Somebody said, yeah, man, it's not our fault that they just keep get, all getting abortions and going trans. And then uh, saying that, you know, orientation, obviously, I guess if you have a different orientation, you're probably not as likely to have children unless you right. adopt. Um, somebody said, well, a lot of people count half Latino, half white kids as Latino, but what if they go more with their white culture? Shouldn't they just count as white? Right, and other people right, said, right. this guy said, you know, like white people, they don't want to have like five kids and stuff like that. So obviously the Mexicans are going to take over because the white people, they're always like so worried about their quality of life and having all these nice material items. And it does, it is true that having five kids kind of crunches your budget. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess, I guess typically, uh, Mexican immigrant families are better at living a happy and enjoyable life uh, without as much money versus right. like, I mean, yeah, there is a standard. If you're white, you, you want to live good. Everybody tells you, 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 you want should the, live it. You want the jet well, skis. You want the multiple trips well, to also, Disneyland. Maybe and things like there's that. some pressure that you feel like you should be living good because you're white in this country. So there's like some pressure maybe from minorities that are like, <laughs> well, you're privileged white. And then the hey, white person's like, oh, you, yeah, you I am. You guys had the head start. How can you be falling behind in oh. the race with the head start? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know what? We did have the head start. I'm going to go uh, swipe my credit card 10 times on yeah. the jet skis. Uh, so like I said, guys, you can go to this thread. I'll link it down below. You ain't hard news. Guys, like I said, I pulled a, co a collection of them. They were all over the place. I couldn't even get to all of them. Moving on to the Daily Mail, Andrew. The Daily Mail, the primary user, I want to say, is either white from America or from England. Right, because someone from England. Right, somebody said America is falling apart and people's color is not the issue. And somebody said, you're right. And there's, oh, this is an Australian person. It's not about color or race, it's about culture. You know, the Eurocentric uh, thinking about capitalism and individualism is giving way to collectivist, progressive, socialist, communist, anti-ownership, anti-profit, anti-freedom, top-down totalitarianism. Uh. So that's the real issue. It's not about race, it's about culture. Andrew, what do you think? I mean, this is, uh, I, I want to say, an older, let's just say middle, to, uh, possibly upper middle class person's opinion on the way these uh, new world countries are turning. Yeah, this comment got upped a lot. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. People spend too much time thinking about race. Focus on integrity ethics and the willingness to support themselves and their family right this was echoed by another american who cares man let's just hope the majority regardless of skin color have strong values morals and work ethic mm. um overall i would say that this is true yeah but how do you do that in a diverse society when people have such different starting points and they um uh, i guess respond to different messaging or messaging in their tone from their community yeah, you know you what led. i mean like there's a lot of things you let the Asians take over, man. <laughs> uh, man, these comments are pretty interesting. What a pathetic article. Seriously, what way to stoke the fires of division as usual? They pit different groups of people against each other just for clicks. I do think this is true. I think that article titles like this are to kind of like fear monger whites, I guess, and then have a bunch of minorities celebrate it because they want, because like, isn't the typical internet response going to be like minorities being like, yeah, white people, the mean white people. Yeah. You're going to be the minority. Right, they're ha -ha. losing power. Cause they did bad stuff to yeah. me in my childhood yeah. or, or tr made me feel worth less than, or a second. class. And then, and then a lot of white people are going to read this and be like, Oh, that doesn't feel good. Like why are so many people like all like trying to be against us? All like, what did we do right. recently? You but know? you know what I don't see Andrew in the comments section, a lot of focus on solutions. I haven't seen somebody oh. go, Oh, how are we going to have more like bonding agents to feel the same and melt together? Listen, guys, the cultural differences, socioeconomic differences, historical differences, tribal clannishness, non-tribal clannishness, transcendent identities that we do or do not adopt. They all are like going to vary person to person. But how do we try to to get together on the same page to run a good system mm. where as the best system we possibly can? No system's perfect. Yeah, you know? I think... 
I think the talk about solutions needs to be big. I think the, th the talk about what the government can do and also what your community and even your neighborhood could do. On an individual basis, yes. micro to macro, right? What can your family do? I think that question needs to be focused on a lot more. And we are going to be talking about that at the end of this video because uh, we might have some suggested solutions um these were a little bit more like uh you know i, I want to say like michael kane type uh, opinions america will go to rubbish it's the saddest thing i've re really read today really it's really sad the whites they built up that country they made it and mm -hmm. now they're losing it right <laughs> and then this funny. person said man a lot of hispanics are white what are you guys talking about yeah i mean uh like i said it, it's kind of crazy to say because it's like from what I've seen, it seems like the whiter Hispanics, I'm not saying for sure, seem like they're more Republican. And then the more, I guess, more mixed looking Hispanics that's more mixed with indigenous are more like AOC and they're more Democrat. I would say in a stereotypical way, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. right. It's just seems, I'm just making a read from basically what I see. Somebody said diversity is the best part of American society. Embrace it. I agree with that. I don't know if it's the best, but it's one of the best things. The food here is the best. The food is so diverse. And we've traveled to a ton of other countries. Mm -hmm. You can't get A1 food from like all across the world, anywhere except in America. Yeah. Uh, you can't even find it everywhere in America, to be honest, more of the major coastal city metropolitan hubs. How come it seems like it's such a great thing, but a lot of people, they don't tap into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we do, but other people, they, they, they don't. I'm starting to think that like a lot of the white people who are fearing this or that are kind of mad to hear this or that are uh, 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 are, are um, mad. Disheartened, yeah. right? Or Disheartened about this. I feel like a lot of what they're saying is, man, I just want people to have white values. Maybe their skin can look a little bit more tan, facial features a little different. I'm okay with that, but I just want them to have white values. Values. But what are white values? Does it mean that we have to just eat the food at like Westville and like, you know, like the Smith just pop up nah, these I think, American dishes? I think the white people who are mad, I'm guessing a lot of what they're talking about is like, man, America felt so much more together when they're white. Or if everybody's white, we feel like we got each other's back more. We're right. going to go help push that truck out of that ditch together. We're going to go protect each other's farms and and, and parks and stuff, you know, we're, we'll patrol we're together. We're more on the same page, We're right? more on the same. I think people just want America to be on the same page. And that's where it goes back to the, yo, the young education where we need to get more Americans on the same page. I agree with that. But that's through the education system and through, like, bonding through, like, sports and stuff, right? Right, right, right. Um, this guy said, uh, well, it wouldn't be the first time in history. Do you guys remember when the white colonizers landed and all the Native Americans were pushed off their lands and killed? Yeah, the America was not majority white back then. <laughs> um, you know what I noticed, though? Is, and like I said uh, to, to the previous point, I don't want to only put it on white people. I think that even other immigrants could do a better job being tapping into the diversity and not just only being into their own enclave mm, culture, too. Yeah. I, I don't want to only, like, you know, we got to be fair true. here. That's true. Minorities need to pull their weight as far as, like, adapting to diversity because, you know— as much as you want to come here and be around your own people, that is fair. But also you have to understand that that if we're going to tell white people that, hey, man, the country is diverse, then we as minorities have to really take that on, too. Right, right, right. You cannot only stay in your own little bubble world. It's like you you, you could spend uh, um, per possibly an outsized amount of time in that bubble world, but you got to go to other bubble worlds and respect them and, and ping with them, too. Um, somebody said once we all mix into one general race, you know, uh, in a thousand years, then all bigotry could stop. What do you think about this, Andrew? Because there was a huge Time Magazine article, and we'll pop up the photos right here. They were saying, this is what everybody's going to look like in about 200 years. And everybody sort of looks like, I don't know, Central Sea. I don't know. There'll still be some racism, I think. But yeah, definitely a lot less. Yeah. Um, somebody was saying, hence the explosion in racism, because this smaller tribe of people is trying to hold on to all the power. It's the fear of becoming a minority. But doesn't that prove that being a minority is a disadvantage if the majority is fearing becoming a minority? Yeah. So I guess they're saying, hey, white people who are fearing this, you guys are just making the whole point 
that being a minority is worse and that there is some white privilege due to the fact that you're scared of being a minority. Right, but I don't think that all whites are scared of being right, a minority. Right, right. I think there's a pretty big distribution just like any other community, right? But obviously uh, the distribution may be more heavy somewhere on the plot chart. Um, this last person said, listen guys, it's just an all an idea so the elitists can better control the country. It's just all about class. It's all about the in crowd and the out crowd. Yeah, they try to blind us with how we look different, but it's really about who's an elite and who's not an elite. Mm. Um, more like the only uh, what the warfare is class warfare. It's not racial warfare. Yeah, yeah. Class consciousness, guys. I guess, David. Let's. I, I think we we can shift the conversation to solutions or ideas for solutions. Things that the government could do, or things that you as a family or an individual can do. You know, to kind of help. I guess contribute to getting everybody on the same page because I think that's what most people are worried about. They're all worried about America not being on the same page. Diversity is great. We all love it. Of course, there's lots of immigrants. Our parents are immigrants. But how do we get more on the same page so that the country can prosper together? Yeah, and I just see this a lot of debate right now, Andrew, even recently in Queens, which is the most diverse district, I believe, in the entire world. There was a huge protest of primarily older first-generation immigrants against the migrants being bussed in. So it's almost like you have people who came through, I mean, who knows, even if they came through whatever channels they came through, probably mostly legal, protesting the arrival of undocumented people. And yeah. they're immigrants themselves, right? Right, right. But from a different previous wave. Right, or maybe they came a different way. And I think that just goes to show you that, in a way, uh, people do have a short-term memory, but I also think that they feel like that they are on the same page in building that neighborhood and they just don't want people who are on a different page right. or that are like coming in like, you know, they don't have homes. Obviously now there's a whole talk of like, oh, can these people, if you got an extra room, the government will pay you a hundred dollars, you know, a night so that they can stay there. Is that worth it? Are you going to do it? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Like we said, guys, these are all, it's just like, it's like silly and it's serious. It's tough to say. And what are some, some big solutions for me? I would like to focus on youth education. I think youth education is super underfunded. It's not holistic. It's only teaching things that like, you know, like even teaching this whole Christopher Columbus thing is a great day and having Christopher Columbus day. I'm against it. Why don't we teach people more life skills, teach people how to get along, teach people how to manage a budget, keep their business alive. If you want to go in a small business, how you balance your costs and your cogs and your labor and how to balance uh, uh, your credit card statements. Why can't we just incur? Like, I just feel like the education system has all the power and they're not making the right moves. That's my opinion. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think youth education is really important and uh, you got to make it so that kids actually go into class and they don't want to just tune out. Yeah. And make it cool, useful. right? And they don't, there's no them. free uh, preschool or free pre-K. It's like, we need yeah. all that. It, um, I, I asked, this is funny though. I asked chat GPT, the AI to come up with a list of 10 things that a family, an individual family could do in their neighborhood to help unify their diverse, uh, community. So these are more micro things. Yeah. These are micro things. Uh, host neighborhood potlucks, welcome new neighbors, cultural learning nights, children's play dates, community cleanups, right? Doing something positive together. It's still kind of work, but you got to be on the same page. Like about a constructive it. Yeah. project. Book or film clubs. This is to tell other people's stories. Collaborative projects, right? Community gardens, art installations, uh, language exchange, speak different languages. Um, I probably do think in America, you should make English the base that just makes things easier. Support local businesses, of course, and emergency preparedness so that everybody can be on the same page in an emergency. Mm. These are also things that just families do together in any community, even families do amongst themselves just to keep the family together, yeah. you know? So I feel like that these are, these are easy things. Hopefully like those are some fun ideas that maybe if you live in a diverse little cul-de-sac, dude, you know? you know, I always looked at the San Antonio Spurs. Think about it. They're in a Mexican American city in a white country, San Antonio, Texas, right? Texas is a red state. It's run by Popovich, who I believe is like Polish Russian. The star players were from Argentina, France, but they were in uh, the Bahamas, or yeah, Bahamas, that's where like Tim Duncan's from. Uh -huh. And they were just running such an amazing system, but everybody bought in and everybody was from somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I think that they run a tight ship. You I know, do it think, don't matter how everybody looks as long as you run a tight system. I do think sports teams need to be diverse, especially at a young age, because sports 
is one of those things. It's kind of like you go to battle with each other and that whole physicality, especially for guys, in particular men, they connect with it differently. And I think you have to put different types of people on different sports teams at a young age. That's very, very important. So anyways, guys, uh, you let us know in the comments down below what other suggestions you might have on this ever-growing lead diverse America, you know, whether it's white people are 48%, 54%. What does it really matter? Who counts as white? I don't know. Let's just get on the same page. Regardless what the numbers are, I think we all need to do a better job of somehow unifying with each other. Yeah, and I do think there's got to be some compromises. It can't be like, oh, you think a little bit different than me, but it's my way, and then I hate you, and it's just like, that's what happened to compromise, man. Yeah. Anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below, and uh, thank you so much for watching the Hot Pop Boys. Until next time, we out. Peace.